Hi everyone, Kate here for another What I've Been Watching video. I felt uh, inspired by Mel from Mel's Bookland Adventures in a recent video talked about how she wanted to start doing videos on uh, things besides books. And I think that's a way that kind of you can long-term sustain a booktube channel is to have it, uh, you know, you obviously, books are a big part of my life, but I do have some other interests. So I thought, you know what, I want to keep talking about the TV and movies that I've been watching and um, because I get excited about those as well. So I'm just going to keep calling this what I've been watching. I, I did one of these uh, the very end of September and, uh, or maybe in August, can't even remember, but I'll do these periodically, tell you about the TV I've been watching and um, yeah, it'll be, it'll be fun. So what I have been watching, the first is Brave, the Disney Pixar movie. And it's funny because I watched this in theaters and thought I really liked that. And then I got it on DVD. So this was years ago and then kind of forgot about it and didn't really have the urge to watch it. And then this winter, when we were all sick one weekend, I put it on and we all had so much fun. And I thought this movie is so good. And then um, a few weeks back, Peter picked it for his movie day and again, loved it so much. So it's definitely become a favorite um, Disney movie for me. There's just so much humor in it. It's so picturesque being in Scotland. And the plot is really interesting and unique from other ones. I love that it's not this typical romance boy meets girl and it's just a really great great movie so if you haven't seen it I highly recommend it then I want to talk about two adaptations of A Room with a View so feeling unwell uh this was in the very end of August and I was thinking I just want something really really soothing and escapist and I re-remembered A Room with a View and I was away from home, so I didn't have access to my DVD of the 80s version. So I found on YouTube the 2007 version and watched it and thought, this is really good. I think I like this as much as the 1985 version. But then I rewatched the 1985 version and was like, no, I remember. I actually like the 85 one better. So the reason that I like the 85 one better is it just has a more playful atmosphere to it. They have a really sad soundtrack going in the background of the 2007 one and I, it gives this ache to the story and then at the end of the 2007 one they make this really sad plot line that is not in the book whatsoever like it totally changes everything about the ending I have no idea why they thought they needed to do that and why people feel that if something um, has sad notes uh, or if something is just happy, it's purely frivolous and there's no meaning and no meat to the story. I don't know why that is a thing of modern movie makers. Anyhow, I do still really like the 2007 one because it does have, I mean, it's based on the book and it's really just a fun story about Lucy Honeychurch who's traveling with her cousin Charlotte in Italy and the interesting characters that she meets and then kind of the ripple effect when she's back at her home in England. Uh, so there is some really fun casting in this and Mr. Weasley <laughs> is Mr. Beeb in the newer one and, um, yeah, just some really, really fun um, actors who are in the newer one. And lots of Harry Potter uh, actors. And then in the older one, I do really, really love this one because it just has a more, the music is really beautiful. Lots of really, um, you know, classical pieces that we all know and love on in the background. And um, just really beautifully done. Very, very fun. Just a fun spirit to it. And the very young Helena Bonham Carter as Lucy Honeychurch is so charming and a very young Maggie Smith as her cousin Charlotte. And uh, yeah, just so much fun. I really, really recommend these. Unfortunately, the 85 one is a really hard to get a hold of. A couple years ago, I bought the DVD and it has um, Chinese writing on it, but it's all in English. So I don't know. It was weird because it was sold in the US. It's the right region. And it's just very odd. So it is hard to get a hold of that one, unfortunately. Next is Home Fires. This is a two season um, mini series that was on uh, the BBC a couple years ago. And it takes place right on the cusp of World War One, or World War Two. And then the second season is when World War Two is really ramped up and things, you know, really hard things are happening. And um, this 
is really fun. It's very soap opera type uh, series, but if you're in the mood for that, you know, if you want the drama, it's really well done. And it's just this small community and kind of how the women really band together. You learn a lot about the Women's Institute at the time and how they were essential uh, to people surviving and uh, making, utilizing all of the materials, everything they have. But of course, there's a lot of personal drama throughout. And what's really sad about this is that the second season ends on such a cliffhanger. And I knew this, I had been warned. And people were tuning into this series. It was really popular. And for some reason, it was just decided that it would be dropped before the third season. So there's so many unresolved things at the end of the second season. So if you do watch it, go in knowing that. I don't want to recommend it without giving you fair warning about that. Next on the list is a series of unfortunate events. I actually finished this a couple months back, but I forgot to talk about it in my other I've been watching video and I just didn't want to forget to talk about it. This is so well done, but as you can tell from the title and if you've read the books, the series of unfortunate events, there are many, many sad things that happen to the poor Baudelaire orphans. So I had to pace myself because I would get really sad, but it's so well done. And what I love is the humor in it. They really keep the humor going. And that kind of is the crutch that gets you through all of these really sad things. It's really fun. The way they played with the sets and the costumes, and it's so elaborate because every book is in a really different setting. And so they're going to need really different sets and costumes and just uh the music is really fun it's just a really great series it's on netflix i definitely recommend it next is victoria so i finished watching season three and this is based on daisy goodwin's uh book and this is it's a bit more high on the drama than i like Vic um period dramas but I'm sold enough. It's not quite the level that Poldark is. Like I had to break up with Poldark. It was just too much for me. But Victoria is like just on the cusp. So I do feel a little bit emotionally exhausted after watching it, but I love it enough that I keep watching. I just love the dynamic between Victoria and Albert in this. And it's really interesting to see all of the things that were going on in England at the time that she was queen. It's going through, I think there's going to be six seasons altogether. So I don't think they have aged her quite enough if this is supposed to be halfway through the series. So yes, I definitely recommend it. It's yeah, it's really, really wonderful. So wonderfully done. And it's just really interesting to learn about, you know, everything that was happening at the time. Um, the potato famine was a big part of this plot and kind of how things were handled. It's just very interesting. Uh, next is Dickensian. This one, this was, I, I don't think I'll ever rewatch this because this was really emotionally taxing. Um, it's a really, really fun concept. It's very well done. It takes a bunch of Dickens novels from all sorts of uh, walks of life and puts them, characters from Dickens novels, puts them all together into this one storyline where Jacob Marley is murdered on Christmas Eve. And so... There's Inspector Bucket from Bleak House who is investigating the case and the Cratchits are in it. Mr. Bounderby uh, works at a school uh, nearby. So he's in a few episodes. Mr. Bounderby is from Hard Times. Uh, then Mr. and Mrs. Bumble from Oliver Twist are in it. Um, Miss Havisham, when she was very young, is in it. So you get to find out how did she become the way that she did when you see her in Great Expectations. So it's like a prequel Miss Havisham, which is really cool. Um, Lady Deadlock from Bleak House is very young in it. And that was the plot line that if you know, if you've read Bleak House and you know about Lady Deadlock and you know about her past, you get to see what happened to her. And that really, that broke me. That's a really hard storyline. It's so well done. So if you're kind of willing to be along for the very emotional ride, I definitely recommend it. And uh, yeah, so we'll be rewatching it just because it broke my heart so much, but it's very, very good. Then Lorna Dune. I talked about this in the Victorian, my favorite Victorian period dramas, talked about it so much and made myself want to watch it. It totally lived up to the memory. I love how adventurous it is and just how it keep, really keeps you on your toes. I had no idea what was going to happen next. Really recommend it. So, so good. Then I want to talk about Meet Me in St. Louis. This is a really wonderful classic musical with Judy Garland. 
And there are four sections to the movie. It starts out in the summertime, and then there's a fall section that includes lots of Halloween. And Halloween at, you know, the very early 1900s. So how they would have celebrated, which was a lot more um, tricks than there were treats. So it's really interesting to get this picture into early 1900s America, how they celebrated Halloween. And, uh, and then there is a winter section, which that is the song, Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas, was written for this movie. Um, but for some reason, I more feel like watching it around Halloween time. I think because it just doesn't feel quite Christmassy enough, even though it has bits of it, it just it doesn't feel Christmassy enough for Christmas time. Anyhow, and then it ends in spring. It's got some really classic songs. Um, the, you know, the storyline starts out when her name is Esther in the story and a very handsome boy moves in next door and um, things take off from there. There's lots of really funny one-liners, comic relief. And um, yeah, just, I love the, the littlest sister is named Tootie and she's telling a friend how she has a doll that she's going to bury because she has four fatal diseases and the person says it only takes one. Uh, so yeah, just really, really a fun classic musical. Then I watched The Young Sherlock Holmes, another one that when I talked about my favorite Victorian period dramas, just talking about it made me want to rewatch it. I have been wanting to rewatch this for years, but I like when I want to rewatch a movie to wait until I really, really want to rewatch it. And I waited until I really wanted to rewatch it. And it was so much fun. It definitely lived up to my memory of it. It just has a very fun spirit about it. It has a really interesting mystery. And uh, yeah, it's just really, really fun if you like kind of um, kitschy. If you like, it's a little bit corny. I love it so much. And then I watched the 2012 Great Expectations and this exceeded my expectations. I was not expecting to like this that much because I've heard a couple people say they didn't like it. I just really liked it. There was something about it. I thought it was really well done. Sometimes period dramas, um, the longer ones, the cinematography isn't going to be that notable. But since this was a feature length film, the cinematography was very notable. I really, really loved it. It was very beautifully done. And um, yeah, it, it was just really lovely. I really recommend it if you like Great Expectations. And then lastly is Spellbound. This is an Alfred Hitchcock. I had never even, I don't think I had heard of it. And I just happened to be looking for something else. I think I wanted to watch some scenes from Vertigo and it popped up a playlist of like Alfred Hitchcock available on YouTube. And this stars Ingrid Bergman. Oh, so, so beautiful. I think she's just one of the most beautiful women ever and has such a lovely voice. And um, Gregory Peck, a very young Gregory Peck. And Ingrid Bergman is a psychiatrist. She works at an institution and the current director is stepping down. He's been having some uh, mental health issues, so he feels like he should not be running this institution. So he steps down and Gregory Peck shows up and is going to be the new director. And things start to get really trippy soon on. This was reminding me kind of of Marnie, but it's very, it felt like a Mary Stewart novel and it's very romantic. It's very dramatic and over the top. But if that's what you're in the mood for, and as always with Alfred Hitchcock, it's going to have really interesting cinematography. Um, one scene in particular really sticks in my mind where there's something really dramatic happening and then the camera just pans over to a door opening and then past that door you see another door that opens and then past that door you see another door that opens and he does this like five or six times. So it's just some really interesting creative moves there. So if you like Hitchcock, I definitely recommend this one if you want something very highly dramatic. And it really put me in the mood. I want to watch more Hitchcock films. I had it as a goal years ago, you know, to watch all of his. And I have so many to go. Uh, so I'll definitely keep you posted if I watch more by him. So I hope you enjoyed hearing about what I have been watching lately. And I'll do this again in a couple months once I have several to talk about. And I hope you have a lovely day. And I'll be back for another video soon. Bye. Before I came down, um, I read my poster. Oh, you did? Yeah. That's fun. All right, see you later. See you later, alligator. In a while, crocodile. <laughs>